Hey guys, it's Jason over at Kaiser Willys. I've got Tanner from Kaiser Willys as well. We just picked up this CJ3A. We picked up a 3A and a CJ3B from our friends down at Salvage Jeep Parts in Statesboro. Uh, this one we're really excited about. I'm gonna do a, a couple of different videos showing you uh, around the vehicle, kind of look at what it is in its uh, state right now. We haven't done anything to it except for just look at it. So that being said, this is a CJ3A from 1951 and it's got a trencher attachment on the back. Now the 3A, they had the trencher, um, so it digs irrigation trenches and so forth. This one has one. Uh, there were two different variations. There was one that bolted onto the back and one that actually went into the bed a little bit more. This one's got it bolted onto the back. Uh, we're gonna try to restore it to an extent that it's going to operate. Everything seems to be there, uh, operates using a PTO, but we kind of wanted to introduce the vehicle. We've named it Trencher. <laughs> what else can we name it for? Uh, we named it Trencher, so this is going to be Trencher, and then we've got the 3B as well. We'll be doing a video like that as well. But we're going to kind of walk you around the vehicle and let you see what it looks like right now and kind of highlight a few of the things that we've found. So let's go take a look. All right, we're going to go inside the engine here in the engine compartment. So this is par for the course. My CJ2A looked worse than this, folks. Um, so first things right off the bat when we're looking in here, we can see that we've got a generator. We've already kind of cleaned up the plate here. So it's a uh, GDZ6001A. That's where you'll find some numbers. We've got a starter right here. It's got the starter, um, the starter solenoid right here with the little foot switch. There's a rod connecting. I don't know if you can see, but we've got a rod connecting here that goes inside. That's how you end up starting the vehicle. Got a battery here with a rag so that it doesn't flop around. I guess the battery tray. No, you got the bolts for the J, you got the spots for the J bolts. It's just an oversized battery, so they couldn't get it into the tray. Battery's toast, that's coming out. Here's your voltage regulator. Uh, we tried to see if there was anything marking. All, almost always when you have a vehicle this old, it's gonna be six volt. You'll start seeing stuff that's marked 12 volt if it's 12 volt, but it doesn't have any markings or anything. It's gonna be six volt, especially with the generator. We've got our distributor here. So it is an original. I don't know if I can get around here, but right here is a plate. Right here. IAD 4008. So we get calls for this all the time. Hey, I need to get points, cap, rotor, condenser, and so forth for my, my distributor. Well, you gotta find your numbers so that we can match this up. Those numbers, it's three letters followed by four numbers. An IED 4008 is what's in this vehicle. Here we've got our coil, thermostat, or your, I'm sorry, your temperature, temperature sensor. The oil bath is missing, so we have no oil bath here. We do have an oil canister, but if you notice, it's not in its original spot. It has been remotely mounted on the driver's side fender. So then moving around here, this is kind of interesting. The exhaust manifold is being held on by a piece of wire. So <laughs> I guess that's, uh, they didn't have anything else. And so they just made a piece of tube work, held it on with a wire. We've got a fuel pump down here with a metal bowl, single action. These would have had a dual action fuel pump because it used vacuum to run the wiper motors. Looks like we've got a dual belt system. So we do have what looks to be a double, well, no, we've only got a single groove water pump, but we got two belts here. So I guess there may have been like a governor. Got a very rusty headlight junction block. It's in the right spot. Now we do have a side mounted radiator. So if you see here, it's mounted on the side. Whereas with my CJ2A, you would have had two studs and it mounted onto the cross member down there with two studs. Now this one is not, it's a side mount. Here's our carburetor. Another question that we get asked a lot is, I need to get a repair kit for my carburetor. And you say, okay, well, what carburetor are you working with? I don't know, it's a Carter. How do I tell? On this particular model, the WO, it's right there. 
So you can see, and let me see if I can get it zoomed in a little bit, W-0. So it's a model WO. So this is the original carburetor. We've got the unoriginal uh, fuel pump down there. Six volt generator, original starter. So this was a six volt vehicle. We've got our linkage right here for the accelerator. So it's, it's still moving free. We do have the right intake manifold on here. So the trucks and station wagons, this intake manifold, the studs would have been going left to right. On the CJs, they were going front to back and the MBs, they were going front to back. We've got a whole bunch of nests in here. So we're probably gonna come in here and just completely clean this out with a uh, pressure washer before we do anything else. Um, there's remnants of all kinds of stuff. You've got this guy right here, I'm assuming was maybe part of the horn mounting system. Uh, you got caked on either mud, grease, everything on the steering gearbox. Oh, wow. The, it's got the manifold pipe down there, but it doesn't have anything that it's attached to. <laughs> so uh, you got lines that are going all over the place. You've got stuff that's been cut. We do have a, a, a rain gutter here, but that's obviously gonna be replaced. So anyway, we're gonna be replacing everything on this vehicle to then rebuild everything. Body is in very poor condition. Um, some really cool things that we have found. There's been, we're gonna clean it up a little bit. There's some remnants of an old name on the side. We've got, this is your tie, they're the hood latches. So broken off, this was a basically like a little door uh, hinge piece that was there. Let's go ahead and close the hood down. Let's take a look at the rest here. All right, so the windshield frame looks like it's been through a horror film. And it's also very rusted out. So that'll all get replaced. Got the windshield channel seats. There's not really a seat anymore. It's the skeleton of a seat. Um, we, got, we got dash. Let's see what we got for mileage. 14,000 miles. 14,874 miles on there. Looks like the emergency brake is engaged. We've got a T90 with a Dana 18 and then a PTO. So the PTO is on there. The lid here, completely gone. The floor is cracking. <laughs> got the master cylinders. It looks like it's still in place. So, unlike some of the versions, uh, this does not have a dually. I've seen a lot of them with the dually on the on the back. Uh, there's a little adapter wheel that goes here to run a second wheel. And now for the rear floor, looks just like the front, but this is the body basically forward. It's very, very rough, very rough. So that being said, the cool part, we've got a Jeep, a trench manufactured by Auburn Machine Works Incorporated in Auburn, Nebraska. I have actually done, we've done some research. Tanner did a lot of research, found some diagrams and so forth for this Jeep, a trench. And the company I believe is still in uh, service now. So here is our trenching attachment. Wire holding the chain from moving around. So it's, it's really cool. And we're just gonna kind of do a brief look at this today, uh, just to kind of give you guys an idea of what this all looks like. So you've got a panel on each side that will open up, which will reveal a lot of the gears. You've got a belt back here. You've got gears, you've got chains, you've got what looks like its own starting apparatus. So like I said, we'll end up doing some more, but it looks like it was using residual power to then essentially motor itself, but using also the PTO. So that looks to be some sort of a generator or motor of some kind. 
We'll do some more research on it. You've got a couple of sticks here um, that will operate. It doesn't look like it's moving too much. It looks like you can get it to move. It's just not very free, but uh, it may not even be attached to anything. And then we've got the, here's the chain operated digging apparatus. It's got teeth on there, big old heavy duty chain. And then you've got these right here, which is uh, I'm assuming some sort of an auger. Again, not an expert on these. We're gonna be doing a lot of research and so forth as we go. You've got another panel here, some more belts, some more chains. If you notice, there's not really any electrical here. So it's just gonna have, it's gonna be mechanical in nature over on this side. We've got lights. You've got a de you've got a uh, data plate here, so we'll go through all of this, and then you've got this brass tag which we cleaned up. It had paint all over it. It's got the Jeepa Trench brass tag. It says Jeepa Trench Auburn Machine Works Inc. It's got the model and it's got the serial number for this Jeepa Trench. We'll be doing a lot of work on this guy, and. Um, We'll get into it and we'll, uh, we'll kind of let you guys follow every step of the way. If we find anything cool, find anything interesting, find anything weird, you're going to see it. So this is Trencher, the CJ3A 1951 with the Jeepa Trench attachment on the back. Thanks for watching guys.